Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I have to tell you this. The Billy Lawson lookalikes here. <laughs> He's not here tonight, and I'm the clean cut version. So there you have it. There you go. Hey, welcome to this week's uh, seminar. Billy, unfortunately, cannot be here tonight. He's got an event with his uh, with his son at school, and I think we would all agree that's more important than what's going on here tonight. So, but we've got two great guests tonight. We've got uh, uh, Cody Mays, owner operator, Weezer's Guide Service. Got David Ozio, the best drop shot fisherman I've ever met. Um, and I, honestly, Cody is, before he got to guiding, he actually fished a lot of these, you know, hourly type tournaments out here. And he's literally won more money than anybody I personally met doing stuff like this. So whatever these two guys say tonight, they've been actively fishing this lake. Um, you know, hey, pay attention. So, uh, Cody, we'll start with you. Yeah. Um, what's been going on on Lake Fork? All right, so this week uh, we've been finding a lot of fish on ledges, ledges and, and humps and, and roadbeds, uh, any depth really. I mean, they're starting to group up on it and you're starting to pull a lot of big fish off of it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of slots, but there's there's bigger fish out there. Uh, we've been catching good unders. Um, so, you know, first thing in the morning, just like anybody else, you, you're going to hit it shallow. Uh, and what's been working first thing in the morning in grass is, is buzz baits, frogs, uh, spooks, um, well, even a whopper plopper, uh, just working it on the grass edge line, throwing that buzz bait over the grass edge, working it over it, uh, and then once the morning bite kind of you know wears out, uh, start moving on out into these points, these hard clay points, um, road beds or, or ledges, um, and you just set up on the road bed. You can either throw it down the road bed over the or even submerged bridges, throw it over the uh, bridge and just work it over the top of it with a shaky head. Um, now it's important to note too that this weekend is Skeeter Owners Tournament, so that's why we're talking about current conditions, what's going on right now at Lake Fort. Right. So what what we're using right now is I couldn't get find the big stuff in my boat, but a three eighths ounce shaky head, six inch divine, and the color that I've been using is Bluegrass Magic. He had me no. You <laughs> been using watermelon or something. <laughs> uh, it, bluegrass, any, anything with a blue color in it uh, has actually been really good for me this week. Um, so just working that shaky head real real slow uh, across some road beds and bridges and um, my, my old fishing partner is getting mad. And how now. deep? Uh, anywhere from 8 to 20 foot of water. So uh, I haven't had really a Carolina bite this week. I, I don't know why but they tend to have been biting the shaky head and the drop shot more than they have a Carolina bite. Um, but other than that uh, you can even throw a crankbait over the road bed as well. Uh, and you know have it digging in and you know they'll chomp that too but so uh, Cody you mentioned that what you're what you're doing right now is you're starting shallow in the morning mm -hmm. frogs buzz baits you know whopper ploppers even things of that nature yeah. how long do you give it you know because we've been faced with cloudy conditions the last couple of weeks and it's going to be the same this weekend how long are you giving it before you make that transition out to a little bit deeper water to about nine o'clock nine o'clock that's yeah. that, that that's your cutoff yep yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So if you know, even if you know at seven thirty, eight o'clock, the bite starts slowing down, I'm still going to fish it thoroughly till about nine, okay. especially if there's cloud cover. Now, is there a particular way you're working that shaky head? I've I've, I've seen I've seen different people work it different ways. Some people will hop it, mm -hmm. some people will drag it, some people will will sweep it. You know. Yep. So what what have you found that's been best so far? So how I've been working it is I've actually been sweeping it, uh, just sweeping it, dragging it. And then once it sets there, just kind of pop it like a drop shot. Just make try to make that tail quiver a little bit, and then sweep it again. So I mean, I don't think you it can go wrong. I mean, some of my clients they've been working it up like a jig or popping it like a Texas rig or whatever. I, I don't think there's any wrong way right now with a shaking head, honestly. I got you. So you guys here again? This guy has won as as much or more money than anybody that I've known personally in these hourly type tournaments. Like he said, start shallow. Start with your frogs in, in, in grass, some sort of structure. Frogs, uh, buzz baits, um, things of that nature. Now, once the day gets rolling, before you move out deep, are you working any swim baits, flukes, you know, things of that nature to try to try to maybe get a reaction bite before you move out? No, sir. No, You're not. I'm not throwing none of that. So by, when I'm done with my top water, I'm, I'm headed, I mean, sometimes it's across the lake to my next spot. Where I want to fish. So. Okay, so you're going sh uh, you're going top water straight to 
deep finesse fishing. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and there's not to say that them fish, them fish are gonna be there in the morning too. I mean, I just enjoy a topwater bite. Uh, who doesn't? Right. So, and, and something else that you can do, you know, this is a two-day tournament, so you've got to think everybody out there in this tournament is going to be fishing. They're gonna be beating the banks. Y'all know it. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Hey, the fish are grouping up out offshore, but everybody likes fishing shallow. So everybody's gonna be beating that bank. So that first day after you get your topwater bite and you go deep, the next day, start, I've always said this, start way off the bank to where those people's boats have been sitting because them fish are gonna pull back from that shallow. And that has been a key thing for me in the past on these tournaments. So instead of throwing up to the bank and working it back, imagine that somebody's sitting there with a boat, fishing that bank and throw where their boat is or even up to the bank and work it back because them fish are smart. They will pull back because they are getting thrown. It's going to be a lot of intense pressure the next two days. Right. A lot. I mean, this this tournament. I, I I've never fished Skeeter owners. This will be my first one. I've heard it's not quite, but almost as crowded as Mega Bass. So maybe some of you guys had, that have fished this before will you know can can back that up. I, I don't know. Um, all right. Awesome. Hey, that's a report from Cody Mays. Uh, Lake Fort Guide, Weezer's Guide Service. Next, David Ozio, mm -hmm. another Lake Fort Guide here that's probably going to talk to you about some sort of finesse technique to catch you a big under. <laughs> Even well, though he did say he caught well, over two this the week, The strange right? thing is, is the multitude of patterns that you can play right now. We've been starting with frogs in a lot of places and catching a decent amount of fish on a frog. The problem with it is, is that the lake is falling. They got several gates open and the water came down three inches today, three inches yesterday. It's down to maybe around a little under 403.40. So it's down in the 30s right now. I suspect that it's gonna continue, maybe even 36. It's gonna come down a little more tonight. My question is, are they gonna cap it at 403.25 and shut the gates? That's a $64 question. Because if you look back at the chart for the past few days, they did cap it at 25 for about three days in a row. So if they shut the gates, then that's going to really help that frog bite because they'll keep water in behind a lot of the alligator grass and vegetation. And I think that Billy and I spoke about this the last time we had this uh, seminar, is that finding places where you've got that alligator grass, but it's feathered right it's it's not a big mat that's like this and you throw it up to the edge of the mat it's got places where it's kind of loose and those fish are in that loose alligator grass if not even up closer to the bank there's places where it's not necessarily matted all the way to the bank or even out now when the lake fell to 40308 uh it's done it twice now in the past two weeks there was no water behind the grass behind the junk, all right? And so we were focusing it out, the frog out in the front of it and working it in front of the potato grass and places where there's lily pads also. And that's where the, the, the fish, we were catching some five and six pound slots in that, but also catching some good unders. So like the same thing that he's doing with the top water, I think you can still do the same thing with the frog. And then I shift gears a little bit different than what he might do is that then the next move is going to be uh, backing out to 8 to 15 foot with a Carolina rig and you can catch a lot of unders and it's just a matter of finding the right point. And you, you get on a point, you stay there 15, 20 minutes, work a couple, two or three baits, move to the next one. The problem you're dealing with in this tournament right here, folks, is that every point's going to have 26 boats on it. And so you just don't get to bounce around like you'd like to in order to cover the water that's necessary in order to find a good group of fish, all right? And so in that Carolina rig, what I'll do is I'll have the clients throwing a Carolina rig, but of course I'm throwing a drop shot. And I have caught quite a few on a drop shot, but we save the drop shot really for later in the day because after one o'clock, we I've been going out to 23 to 25 foot and it's been a field day out there every day after one o'clock, two o'clock for a short period of time in 23 to 25 foot. Even some days caught them in 28. And those fish are grouping up out there. And you just, you just gotta run. Like I pulled up a while ago, I just got off the water no more than 20 minutes ago. And I pulled up on a spot at five, it was 10 minutes to five. <clears throat> and the key factor that I've been looking for everywhere I go is sand bass, all right? And when I can find those sand bass, depending on how they lay, if they're sitting in 26, 25 foot, the black bass are gonna be right inside of them. So I pulled up on a spot a while ago, 
and I went, whoa, look at this. And I made a circle around it and look, 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 look. And I said, I'll be dead gum. So spot locked it right there. We caught five over five pounds just like that. And I was like, man, oh man. And uh, I was like, whatever it does, I gotta go. <laughs> we take off. But uh, the, the bigger fish, we did catch an over today and it was in 23 foot of water. So, I mean, there's a, a sizable amount of them that are, that are out deep. But there's also a sizable amount of them that you could catch on a frog or on, like he said, a shaky head or anything like that. I think these fish are going to be caught in every depth range in this tournament because of the water temp. 77, 78, 79 in some places. I was fishing a frog uh, the other day. Water was 73, okay, in the, in the backwaters. So water temperature will play a big role in what those fish are going to do and how they're going to move. And you got to keep your eye on the water depth. To, to see what kind of vegetation is going to be exposed and where you need to throw the frog. Either it's going to be on the outside, up in the scattered stuff, or even on the backside. There's sometimes during this time of the year, those big fish will be in water literally this deep. It's the damnest thing I've ever seen. Why is that? Maybe it's because there's brim spawning, uh, and there's a lot of brim yet to spawn. Water temps in a lot of places, 77 degrees, those brim spawn a lot of times 80, 84 degrees. So we've seen a bunch of brim beds, the big cannonball holes that they make in a lot of places on the side imaging, but when you get up in the dirty water, the real muddier water, those fish are always gonna move shallow. And they're gonna stay shallow. I mean, we were catching in the, the 22 kill tournament last year, we were catching six and seven pounders in literally two foot of water, dirtier water. And that's in July. And that was in July, hot, July 4th. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah. <laughs> and those are, there was plenty of fish up there in that shallow water. So you got to open your mind, and you know, I mean, if you'd have had, if we'd have had this seminar on Wednesday, the amount of boats that have been out here for the last two days has been <laughs> insane. You know, so everybody's been pre-fishing, you know, but a lot of people are just running wild and stopping here, stopping there, you know. But if there's, when I fish a tournament, a lot of times, and we get enough time to pre-fish it, then. I'll end up having a puzzle here where we'll fish shallow to pick up X, then we'll move to mid-depth, then late in the day, we'll try to stab a big one out deeper. Now, also, you can't rule this out. I fished a tournament last Saturday here, and I put on a three and a half inch white trash little dipper on a half on a three eighths ounce open jaw hook. And throw it up there shallow the first hour in the morning and reeling that because why? Because I was after unders, all right? And I mean, I wanted to, and so if you're after a money fish the first hour in the morning, I threw that thing up shallow and I caught two shad, hooked them on the, the open jaw hook, all right? And these shad were about that big. And I thought, well, I'm in the right spot. Ended up catching six unders in, in a, a fairly short period of time. So, uh, you know, I mean, you gotta keep that in the back of your mind also. There's still some shad spawn fish up there. So, um, and I think this may still go on for a little while yet, but that is a great, great strategy for, for picking off those unders. And you can catch a two and a half pound under doing that because they're up there feeding on the same shad. So that's the way I've been running the past uh, week and uh, it's been pretty good. Awesome, so it's, it's interesting, David, you say that. Um, one thing I personally have never done, probably because I'm not a very good fisherman, but um, monitoring the lake level and you know I, of course I do monitor lake level before I go out I look at my app and it says okay the lake's here but you're actually monitoring it for the last couple of days so you've got to figure out where they're capping it off okay mm -hmm. which will which will almost tell you okay well they have capped it off this way three days in a row if they cap it off this way again I know exactly what they're gonna do so that's that's a great tip right there yeah it's just to follow the history of what they're doing. Well, when right? you get in the backs of some of these creeks and there's vegetation in the backs of all the creeks, the trick is if we can go five or six or seven days without rain, then, and especially the number one factor is less wind. If you get several days like we've had here with no wind, what happens? The sediment settles down. All of a sudden now you can see that far down. That's all you need. Then all of a sudden chatter baits, swim baits come into play. Throwing a, throwing a skinny dipper on the on a with a 3 16 tungsten weight over the stuff throwing it up there reeling it through and when those things can see it good oh they'll jump out of there and trash it you know so when they when i know that they're going to cap the lake there's some places in the lake that on this lake that is almost a given that you can go to and catch them you know but if the water continues to fall then they're going to continue to move so some of those places might not be as good if the water gets too low so paying attention to that will help you to make better decisions and that's what the game's all about is decisions 
sometimes we make some terrible decisions. <laughs> well, like Ozzy was saying, you know, catching that good under first thing in the morning. In my experience in these hourly tournaments, a lot of people don't weigh in fish that first hour of the morning because yeah. that's the best time of the day to fish. But so if you can catch a good under, it's worth it to go ahead and run up here and weigh it in. Well, and it's also too, it's like he said, he's throwing a top water. I'm not against that, but what I am against is using a big top water. You're either going to you're either going to catch a slot, but you have a chance to catch a big over. Mm -hmm. I would rather use a just a regular yellow magic, the smaller one, and you got a chance to catch a pretty good size under. You know, I'm playing for the for the checks. I do a different game than maybe these guys do, especially Billy. Billy's a power fisherman. He's going after Godzilla and his brother. We I spend a lot of tournaments focusing on the unders here, the big unders. And my tournament partner that's fishing here this week, uh, Sunday he had 11 pounds for a five bag of unders, and he had some over 250. So he's already got his plan set, and I already mentioned what he's going to do. Y'all just don't know which one it was. <laughs> so I know exactly where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> because he's going to launch at your ramp. He called me. <laughs> nice. nice. But, uh, I have to talk to but the, the, little, <laughs> the little yellow magic is a better better means. You still can catch a decent sized fish, but you got a better chance to catch a good two pounder on that one rather than throwing a bigger bait up there in that first hour window. I would definitely have a yellow magic tied on and I would have a, a, you know, a three and a half inch little dipper and i'd have a skinny dipper tied on too really because a two and a half pounder will hit a five and a, a five inch skinny dipper mm -hmm. yeah so um i talked to billy uh, earlier in the day and i asked him what what's been his best pattern this week and i don't know if you guys um watched his thursday night but you know he's chasing brim beds he watches that side scan. He, like David said, he finds those potholes and he sits back and he hits them with a square bill, you know, a brim colored square bill or a brim colored swim jig, something along those lines. For what it's worth, uh, my best pattern over the last week for anybody that cares um, has been about the same thing, but I've been using weightless plastics. I've been throwing flukes. Um, fluke has been my number one bait over the last couple of days um, for good unders. I haven't caught any overs, but um, so, question for both of you guys, which is going to help everybody here. It, let's just say, you know, you guys are big tournaments. Not big, but you guys have fished a lot of tournaments here. What would it take as far as the size of an under for you to say, okay, I'm going to weigh this fish in? Over two and a quarter. quarter. Two and a quarter. Yeah. Two, two, five. So, yeah, so, so if you catch a two, five, you're, you're going to weigh in. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Okay. 100%. And if you're his fishing partner, I mean... That ain't a big glory. I mean, he catches three pounds on that. <laughs> <laughs> you pointing at him or me? <laughs> his, his, he is weighed in too in big my, tournaments. We're my tournament partners. Uh, oh, that's right. That's we've right. been. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're big junkies for chasing the unders, and you know the the thing about the unders is the big unders group together a lot of times. So if you can find an area where there's there's 240, 250, 260, 270, you're going to catch more than one in that area. And in the fall last year, in September, October, I had taken a bunch of people on guide trips out for the McDonald's or for the Sealy, the Splash, and the Berkeley, and I had an area that the 250 to 3 pounders were in, and God, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And they stayed there for a month. Had it all to myself. And so those type of things, those guys, one guy, he made 2000 in the in the tournament, you know, I mean, weighing in uh, good unders. And so it depends. A lot of times if somebody tells me that they want to come over here and they want to catch a big fish, try to win the tournament, then I'll point them to <laughs> Billy and those guys. You know, I, I mean, uh, I chase big ones, and we do catch overs a, a decent amount, but I'm the type of person that chases the unders, and if an uh, over happens, praise the Lord. Well, bottom line, there's a lot more unders to get weighed in these tournaments yeah. than overs. Yeah, and I mean, this is this month is an unusual month, and there's been past month Junes where I would have sworn it wasn't going to take very many overs at all, and you'd be surprised they end up with twenty some odd overs mm -hmm. in this tournament. So this is a good month for overs, and I suspect that a lot of those overs are going to be caught on a Carolina rig. I really do. Well, you know, with that being said, you know that's why I fish with these two baits a lot, and it's drop shot and shaky heads mm -hmm. those two baits right there will kit, catch good unders and they will catch big fish yeah well and also so, too one little tip that i do that most people say well you know drop shot you think drop shots little fish bait <clears throat> but i throw bigger worms fatter worms on the drop shot i don't use just the regular skinny worms i use a lot of the fatter series worms which add a little bit more bulk when curtis and i are fishing those tournaments 
I shouldn't be saying this. I'm gonna kick my butt. Uh, <laughs> you can't, you can't a, stop now. There's a uh, there's a way that we do this in order to make sure we get a limit first, and then to go after the big ones. He'll stay with one pattern, but I'll always go to that fatter worm in order to try to catch the bigger ones. And I do catch my share of slots doing that, but I do cook some overs on that also. And so uh, this is an excellent, excellent month. Uh, I love drop shotting this time of the month because you can uh, definitely have some fun, fun, fun. You know and 24 to 28 foot you know you stumble like i just stumbled up all ago and you drop that thing down there man and they just load up on it they're feeding because those sand bass were right there and these things were mixed right in with the sand bass those sand bass were on those spots six days ago and then they were gone the day after they left i still caught those fish there and then the day after that they were gone four days i went and i went back and checked that spot those fish were not there hmm. today i was passing by i said let me look Pulled up there, and as I pulled up to it, I went, whoa, look at this. Circled around, I said, we're going to make a cast here. So I flipped the troll motor over, and I first drop. <laughs> oh, God. And so, you know, well, I mean, they can, as long as those that bait fish shows up, the two places where we caught the over had sand bass on the edge in 24, 25 foot, and then that spot had sand bass right on the edge. Well, so that's a good key. I, you know, you brought up sand bass. I actually talked to my clients Monday about that. Um, sand bass ain't just going to hang around when there ain't no bait. No, I mean, uh, so. well, I mean, uh, what they're eating, but those bass yeah. are going to mix in with it because yeah. the, the smaller, weaker ones, that's what they're going to feed on. Yeah. And if you don't think that a, that a bass will feed on a barfish, uh, you're wrong. Yeah. They will. And, and them sand, sand, bass sand bass have been loaded up on them road beds here lately. Yeah. I, mean, uh, big time. I really hadn't been paying much attention to the road beds uh, at all because, I mean, the points, if you just scour enough points, uh, you, you'll end up running into them. Yeah. But, so do you think it's more... You think it's more the sand bass pushing the shad up, which brings the bass in, or do you think it's more the bass well, pushing the shad? I don't see a lot of bait balls around where the sand bass are. I mark the sand bass on the graph, and I can see them. But then you'll see in the the, the sand bass, you'll see more thicker red arcs in there. Even on the I use a Solex, and so I can see them in it. And so when I'm pulling up to it, and I've seen it before on the outside of them, you can see arcs and they're spread apart. Sand bass won't do that. Sand bass yeah. are going to stack closer right. together. Mm -hmm. And then what the key's been is that, say, there's places where the sand bass cap off in 26 foot, and then the bass will be in 23, 24 foot right inside of them so that they can zoom in, pick one off, zoom back out. And so a lot of days we're catching them in 22, 23 foot. You know, so it depends on that. So the mornings, the earlier, and I've checked it earlier in the mornings, and it's 26, 27, 28 is where you're going to get the bass bites because when those sand bass start to move in, then the bass will move up a little bit shallower later in the day. Awesome. Awesome.